Hello and let's talk about COVID-19 and the banking sector. Over the past week, we saw Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman announce various components of the rupees 20 lakh crore package that the Prime Minister had earlier announced. Now, a lot of experts have pointed out that rupees 20 lakh crore is actually not going to be spent by the government. And in fact, the fiscal outlay or the actual spending may be only around 1% of the GDP as opposed to the 10% he declared. However, even the schemes that have been announced are mostly going to be executed by the banks. There's a lot of responsibility on them, especially when it comes to the giving out of credit and other such issues. So how are the bank employees coping in such a situation? What are the challenges they face? We talked to Thomas Franco, the former General Secretary of the All India Bank Officers Confederation on this issue. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. So what we're seeing is a situation where on the one hand, people are not going to really end up with much money in their hands. And on the other hand, the actual number of bad loans, the SOPs to the private sector are going to increase and all the finance ministers, of course, also announced measures for massive privatization as well. So in this context, what is the situation faced by the bank employees, especially those who are those who have been working relentlessly over the past few days? They are some of the employees who have not really got a chance to stay at home or work from home or do anything of that sort. So how have how, how what what is their situation right now? One is this privatization announcement is going to be uh, very bad for the economy and for the banks also, and especially for the enterprise. Yeah. See, when you have to use some stimulus, all along public sector was used. You buy the production of the cottage industry, you buy the from the car, you buy from the micro small enterprises. So, huge enterprises like uh, the railways, the oil sector, the telecom sector, all of them were buying. Now, uh, Mr. Nitin Katkari had even announced in the last session of the parliament that 5 lakh crores is what is due from government and public sector undertaking to the MSMEs. Now they have said they will release it in within 45 days. We have to wait and see whether it is really given. Now, once you privatize, that condition you cannot put. So these enterprises themselves are going to get into crisis. Mm -hmm. Now coming to the part of the banks, the banks are working under severe strain. Number one is the acute shortage of manpower. In the last uh, five, six years, the recruitments have been curtailed in such a way that you are not recruiting even the number of employees who are retiring. They had been wanting to give a push towards this digital for which they have put a curtailment on the recruitment. So the banks are understaffed. And because of that, banks were concentrating on larger credits, which was easy. Now time has come, you have to concentrate on the retail credit. For example, you are saying that you give this uh, 45 lakh industries loans which requires huge manpower and another 50 lakh people you have to give this 10,000 rupees loan for the traders that is the street vendor in my opinion that should have been simply as a package free to those people they are the poorest after all 5,000 crores the government can afford they should reconsider otherwise you are making them to run to the banks for a number of days and putting strain on the bank also and the banks, the present strain, apart from the staff shortages, see, when the whole country was under lockdown, banks were working full. Transportation was problem. They had to travel in their own vehicles. I have seen girls driving their scooters 60 kilometers, 70 kilometers to attend to their office. So there is naturally a mental fatigue. Secondly, the government announced uh, a package of 50 lakh insurance for who the people, especially in the uh, health workers, that 50 lakhs will be the insurance coverage for them in case of uh, uh, COVID disease. But same is not extended to the bankers. Already, for my, uh, my own information, I know of four cases of deaths due to COVID among the bankers. So there, 
the individual banks are deciding 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs, uh, 20 lakhs maximum, it's 20 lakhs only has been announced by State Bank of India. So that is also people are very unhappy. Number three, for one year they have put a hold on transfer. Now everybody wants to go back to their hometown. Whatever is the difficulty, including the migrant laborers. Right. But that is also put on hold. So that is an, another unhappiness. Then the wage revision. Now it is overdue by 930 nine days. The stocks also have come to a standstill. Mm -hmm. So that also people are very unhappy. So the morale has been totally down. So the government has to take action on boosting the morale of the bank staff. Otherwise, even if they announce whatever uh, schemes, banks also find their own way out to fulfill the target. Right. An interesting uh, uh, example I would like to tell you. The government was pushing Stand Up India scheme. I have seen a lot of bankers contacting their existing customers, doctors, who do, actually do not require a credit. Tell them that, okay, sir, we have a new scheme, take 10 lakh loan, buy some equipment. They were also buying happily. They were charging their uh, customers. That is the sick people were being forced to pay more. Similarly, Mudra loan, when there was a pressure, the bankers were finding it easy to find some known fellow around their house or around the branch, fulfill that 25 number target. So actual needy person may not get this loan exactly. unless you give a moral boost to the bankers. That is my uh, yes. suggestion. And and finally, the key in certain in a few concrete points, could you talk about what would be the recommendations uh, from your side, from the side of the unions that are thinking about these issues? What are the key recommendations to the government right now? Uh, number one, I would uh, suggest that there should be a massive recruitment. That might take time. For that, I, there is a ready-made solution available. There is a huge number of business correspondents who are sitting in villages with a customer service point. They were not given much of benefit, though they were handling this direct benefit transfer of 500 rupees and all. Most of it was handled by them. They were given just one transaction, two rupees more. And their insurance cover is just 10 lakh. If they die of COVID also, they get only 10 lakh. So, these business correspondents whose number is more than lakhs, they can be, as per an award report, it is almost 5 lakhs. So they can be absorbed as regular employees and these customer service points can be converted into branches, small branches. So that will create a bigger change in the economy as a whole. Secondly, their life and that issue is uh, naturally the wage revision. That has to be looked into, it has to be addressed immediately. Then you have to increase the fiscal stimulus. Hmm. Unless you flow in more money into the uh, economy, whatever uh, loans you are giving, that will also go back. Now you remember during the budget, and little before that, in a speech, the Prime Minister also announced that we are going to work towards a five trillion economy. And the concrete announcement made by the Finance Minister was that within five years, 103 lakh crores will be spent for infrastructure bill. Now you divide it. So for this year, they should be spending at least 20 lakh crores. Let them spend that. Right. That will create a lot of employment opportunities and in infrastructure is what is going to build up the economy. Similarly, the existing loans, restructuring schemes have to be announced. Because once you say you cannot classify it as NPA, earlier Reserve Bank had permitted the restructuring which was stopped and now it is allowed only for MSMEs. It might be requiring for the housing sector also the other people. Here, one 
uh, I think as uh, people at large, we should worry about is that the focus now from the Reserve Bank as well as government is that, okay, instead of expanding the bank branches and staff, you lend to the non-banking financial. Non-banking financial companies, many of them are run by again corporates. Reliance has its own. We know in South is Muthut, Manapuram and Bajaj Finance. We have seen the Divan Housing, what has happened to it. We have seen the ILF. So these companies are going to be given more loans, which can later on go back. More than that, they will be taking loan at 10 or 11 percent from the banks, and they will be lending it at 24 percent. They are permitted to do that. And some of them, in addition to this, they charge something called service charge also. So this is going to be very bad for the customers as well as for the banks. So this has to be rethought. Similarly, an interest subvention scheme. See, just to quote one example of Thailand. Thailand average interest rate is 15%. But they have announced three different loan schemes. For the poorest of poor, 0.1% interest. Another section, it is 0.35% interest. And for the MSMEs, it is 2% to 3% interest. Right. So that kind of interest subvention has to be done. Then only this economy can, the enterprises have to survive. Exactly. As, as such, they are going to have a big constraint in the manpower. We have treated the people in such a bad way, people will be willing to die in their native place and they won't want, they want to go back as migrant laborers once again. Then you have problem of uh, raw material. So at that time, the government has to give this incentive of interest concession is my sir. Similarly, what they have announced is 100% credit guarantee. That is not 100%. The credit cover which is today available is for certain loans, it is only 50%. Some loans it is 75% and maximum is 85%. And there is something called a quick mortality. If the loan goes bad soon, then the guarantee cover will not apply. So the overall changing of the credit guarantee scheme is required. If you are really saying 100%, it should be made 100%. Right. So these kind of uh, efforts, if it is taken, then it will definitely bring a change in the economy. Thank you so much, sir, for talking to us. Thank you, Tom. In our next segment, we discuss the possibility of the resumption of sport activity in India. Now, some sport activities have begun in Germany and in the US, and the government has also in India declared that stadiums and sporting centers can be open. So, is it possible to really resume sport activity or is it going to take some more time? We talked to Leslie Xavier of NewsClick Sports Desk. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. So, we've Thank seen you. sporting events uh, resume in certain parts of the world. Germany and the US are examples. Of course, these are being done with a lot of uh, protection, they, not, they are basically zero audience events to a large extent. And there's been a lot of speculation about whether some of this will happen in India as well. In fact, the government has said that stadiums and sports centers can reopen. So, as we are discussing these issues, as the country is discussing these issues, what do you think the situation in India is? Are we looking at the possibility of a proper reopening or is it something that is going to probably take some more time? Well, uh, to be frank, it's too early to to think about reopening sport in the country as such mm -hmm. because we're talking about Germany. I mean, if you're looking at mass sport, when then you have to take into consideration the action that started in Germany, the Bundesliga football. Because uh, in the US, it, it has been UFC. There was an invitational golf event that happened, which was very close to us and only three players involved. But UFC being com close combat sport that was a little a little tricky from their part to open it but then they they conducted it like a reality show because for for ufc you can quarantine the uh, fighters in in facilities that they have training facilities and they call it i mean it's practically a jail but they call it training camps so 
uh, that way they can control the environment. Uh, Bundesliga very keen to see what happens 14 days hence because yeah. the first week of action happened, but then you know the gestational period of the virus as yeah. because it's not just about uh, 22 players on the pitch. It's uh, all of it's about support crew. It's about camera crew to uh, stream it. So so stadium is not like it's it's just just the players and the coaching staff involved. It's 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 probably a, a 200 odd people around to make it happen. So that's a large crowd. So how much how much do you quarantine? How much do you trace their contacts, trace their history of of uh, so right. all these things are tricky and they, all these things are impossible to put in place in, in in a country like India where the situation as far as COVID-19 is concerned is not exactly under control despite the uh, almost two month uh, long lockdown. We are breaking records every day as as we speak. Uh, I mean as far as infections are concerned and this. Uh, without proper and full-fledged testing as such. So, uh, opening stadiums and uh, sports centers, great. Uh, it, it would provide uh, avenues for certain athletes and some of our youngsters to train. Right. Uh, cr cricket has been very clear that they wouldn't push their cricketers into training. Uh, uh, I mean, just because the stadiums are open, because they, are, they have to... They are keen on putting the logistics in place, ensuring that sa safety and safety is paramount, of course. So, will that translate to all the other federations uh, taking measures before jumping in? It's it, it remains to be seen because, as far as we know, our administrators are a little, uh, I mean, not exactly very objective as far as planning is concerned when implementing certain measures. Right. So, in this context, uh, I understand that the Indian Olympic Association has also asked for some uh, money from the government. Considering the with the argument that this is essential for resuming sport activity in the country, so a key question is: Is this money necessary? Is it enough? And will it actually help uh, bring about what the IOA says it will do? Uh, but it's it's uh, I mean it's multifaceted question that way. But yeah, to be I mean fair to the IOA. Uh, the money is important uh, because uh, sport is is a sector is one sector that was I mean directly and for I mean affected and it's evident, very evidently affected uh, by the pandemic and uh, action has completely shut down. There are campers stuck in uh, various facilities. I'm talking about the elite Indian athletes. Of course, at the lower level, many athletes are struggling to train, they are struggling for day-to-day -day existence as well because not, not all of them have steady jobs and things like that. But are you asking money? And to be exact, it's there is a breakup of the money to be exact. Uh, it's 220 crore. Uh, which is uh, which should which is uh, out of which 10 crore is for the IO, Indian Olympic Association itself and then uh, one crore each to the 34 state Olympic associations and then there is uh, 31 uh, Olympic uh, federations national sports federations and eight non Olympic national sports federations so the amount is to be divided among among these two that is the request that Indian Olympic Association president uh, Narendra Batra forwarded to the sports ministry. But the point is, uh, there are many ironies in this request. First thing is, uh, the 220 crore that you have mentioned in this, it's, it's, it's slightly below the yearly allocation, budgetary allocation for national sports federations in the union budget. So, uh, in the union budget, which, which was presented by Nirmala Sitaraman in February, the allocation was 245 crore. Uh, for the for the uh, national sports federation while the chunk of the the total budget is 2826.92 crore the uh, total union sports budget out of which the biggest chunk 890.5 crore was reserved for the pet project of prime minister which is Kelo india yeah. now uh, i mean it's a, it's a different debate whether Kelo india serves the purpose of bringing sport uh, up and Indian sport up into the higher excellence of world sport where we get Olympic medals. It, that's 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 the claim, but uh, that's a different. I mean, whether it serves the grassroots as as much as it should, or whether pumping in money into the national federations serves the purpose, that is a qu question. But evidently, IOA believes that the national federations are the ones that are playing a key role in spreading sport at the grassroots, and so. When the budget was allocated, this very IOA or the National Sports Federations never raised any issue about the very, very 
small amount that has been allocated for them. Yeah. And now they are asking for money. And they're asking for money again a month after these federations have had donated money to PMKs. So my question now is, if they were really cash trapped, then why do that show? Why do I do that PR show? That's 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 one question that they need to answer. And secondly, if if at all the money is allocated, will it be used uh, in the right way for the right people, for the right uh, development of sport or right opening of sport at all levels, not just the elite level? Mm -hmm. Or will it again be in the hands of uh, administrators who would spend it at their whims and fancies, probably donate it at some random new fund that will come up down right. the year, which... which which, which lacks any clarity as to where the funding would be used. Right. So these are questions that need to be, I mean, so this this provides that correct picture of how Indian sport, admin, Indian sport is administered, Indian sport is run. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, gimmicks, which, which is the case for all sectors, I guess. And uh, there are also a clear lack of planning because this is a blanket amount that that you have thrown at the ministry saying that we need so much of money to restart but where is the plan hmm. and when and what is the question as well because we are not looking at a, a, i mean any any clear time frame where things would be close to normal as far as controlling the inf infections are concerned right uh, we are we are no we have not opened uh, transport logistics as such interstate travel all these things so uh, uh, yeah it's it's great to seek fund in advance so that plans can be made but then i feel when when it's when it's about sport and when it's uh, when it's in such an unprecedented situ situation that we are in now we need to have a plan in place before seeking fund because fund is at a premium because mm -hmm. fund is needed on all sectors and probably I mean, being a sports journalist, I shouldn't be saying it, but probably sport comes way down the picking order as far as uh, right. uh, priority is concerned. Exactly. So what the administrators need to do is basically also have a much larger debate in the country or uh, probably there's no history of it, but right now it is essential to sort of have a much oh. larger, broader discussion on how to take policy forward. Yeah, again, so so IOAS, uh, to be fair, again to IOAS, unprecedented move again because uh, democracy is, democratic means is, is a little, I mean, less in Indian sport. But IOA, a couple of weeks, uh, last week to be exact, they they sent out a Google form to, to journalists as well, as well as all the National Federation sports persons and all to give uh, to give feedback on how we deal with this reopening. Right. So form is pretty basic, uh, whether we should open, whether we shouldn't, which sport should be given priority. Mm -hmm. For instance, certain sport have an advantage when it comes to reopening. Certain certain sport doesn't. Like wrestling and all are very difficult to reopen because it's 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 close combat sport. Mm -hmm. But maybe archery, is, uh, archery can be done. Uh, certain non-combat sport can be done. Certain sport can be demonstration sport like gymnastics and all can be done online. It's happening, by the way. Okay. Uh, karate or gymnastics and all this uh, sport, the demonstration part of it, like kata demonstration in karate. It's there are many online competitions that are happening mm -hmm. where people can record on Zoom. I mean, I mean, come on live on Zoom and demonstrate, and the right. judges will the right. judges will give you points and win. So similar moves can be made. But oh, so IOAS reached out to people for the plan. But whether uh, the assimilation of ideas mm -hmm. work in an Indian context is it's because because a lot of ideas would come in right. a lot of interest because different sport have different priorities different interests different way to implement these things so so uh, it 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 might not exactly be a great idea to assimilate all 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 the values maybe the you can you can bring in specific people who are involved in at the deeper level from the lowest to the highest right. in specific sport make plan the federations make their plan, present it to IOA, and then a consolidated plan be made. Right. No, uh, giving out a uh, Google form, again, reeks of gimmick that we mentioned, that I mentioned earlier in the discussion as far as donation is concerned. Right. It's something uh, something as similar as that, because it gives you great PR. Right. People will say, look, IOA is asking us mm -hmm. for, for feedback. But but uh, it's, it's impractical if you ask me. Right. Thank you so much, Leslie, for talking to us. Sweet. Okay, thank you so much. See, yeah, rega re regarding this again, uh, that's, that's all we have in this episode of Let's Talk. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest news developments of the day. Until then, keep watching News Click.